where we left off last time, the party had completed a task for Farika. She had sent you to collect a lost, well, I guess stolen object, which you were able to do. Uh, unfortunately, there were a little bit of tiny, tiny little bits of losses that went along with that. Uh, Varro was rendered unconscious and is still unconscious at this point. And Adrastos is not quite the Leonin he used to be. Yeah, just a little bit. A little off the top or side. A little less handy. Yeah, yeah, a little less handy than he used to be. Yeah, success cost us an arm. <laughs> Thankfully, not a leg. But everyone did level up, so they should be feeling much better now. Yes, they are all level six. All right. With that. What would you like to do? We were headed into the closest town to see if there's replacement limbs for Adrastos, at least replacement I, weapons. I think first we were going to, there was a town nearby that had a... Uh, the same one. It oh, was, it's, it's the same Krimnos. one? Okay, so it's yes. the same one. Cool. Yeah. Yes, Krimnos. It's a fairly large town, but not huge. I thought we were going to have to ping pong a bit. I misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so, we were trying to get at least at least uh, weapons, and also be in a place where there was a temple of Farika, and uh, give her back her what's a husits. What's a husits are always important. Yeah, oh, very. It was a, a wooden vessel of uh, with some ornate carvings on it. That when Tali touched it, he immediately felt refreshed, as though he'd taken, let's say, a short rest. Not in the shape of a falcon, is it? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. It is not Maltese, either. No, I was going to ask if it was Maltese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it also spoke to me, and I had to ignore it, but there was there was that part. Oh, yeah. Did you tell us that? No. Did I you tell us anything. anything about that? Okay. Nope. Nobody knows. All right. That's what we've seen. <laughs> Nobody From knows. is still a, a bit of a way away, a couple of days drive, but... Uh, so we will assume that you get a long rest along the way, so everybody should be fully rested by the time we get there, especially Vara, who's been sleeping for several hours now. Almost a couple of days. No. Yeah. Wow. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> yeah, too much rocking and rolling. Nope. Yep. Uh, Pop between a rock you can't and rock all night. You'll sleep all day. Anyway. To Krimnos! <laughs> Please, <laughs> shut Tam up and hit the damn road! <laughs> Uh, the trip is fairly quiet. The road's not too bad. It's it's actually a fairly decent road on this side of the uh, of the bay, and you travel for a couple of days, un undeterred. Um, Tikaros, you have you sent a message last time on the sending stones, and they've been quiet. You oh. you know that uh, Ariana used to get a message every day, and she would reply every day, but it's it's quiet after your last message that you'd sent. Quick question. Yes. During this these days of of uh travel, um we would I assume we'd have to to set up camp every single time. Yes. It's like rest yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Could could I possibly um find a time when everybody is asleep or something like that to kind of wander a little further out by myself absolutely i will ask however because we have certain people who you may think you're alone is anyone following him i'll follow from a distance yeah who am i looking I at would i don't know who could i be talking yeah, about all staring at one particular <laughs> screen and watch here for him. i think she wouldn't let you go out by yourself if she noticed you going she would stealth and follow you to I think make sure that you were safe, probably. Of all the people, I would make sure that some people were already asleep. So if if it's possible <laughs> for me to roll a stealth check to see if like if someone's like a light sleeper, I know I know for a fact that we have at least one person that's like a light light enough sleeper to potentially still uh pick up on it. I think Hy Hyrex mentioned that he was a light sleeper, but everybody else, I think. I still want to roll the stealth to try to. Okay. 
Well, you go ahead and roll that stealth, and uh, Tikaros, uh, please roll me a perception at disadvantage because you should be okay. asleep. Sure thing. I will not be rolling because I am going to not leave Vara again. And I'm like, they, okay. they can handle Tully. <laughs> uh, that was a total of 18. Okay. Nine. So Tikaros is. <laughs> All right, so you are able to sneak away into the night. Okay. Um, I don't think I'll be too far away, just a little further away from, from the camp. Okay. And uh, find myself, like, a little bit of a clearing in the woods, so at least I could, like, kind of look up into the stars okay. in that sense. And I will, for the first time in Tolly's life, silently pray to the god that seemingly gave him his second chance at life. All right. What kind of role would you want me to do for that? Uh, let's do a religion, and then tell me what you're looking for. Tell me about the purpose of this prayer, what your intent is as well. Tell um, me why. <laughs> mostly the intent is to ask for any way to receive... Uh, some sort of strength to guide, to protect his friends, in that sense. Okay. And, and protect for, the goals. Well, for those who don't know, you're specifically praying to Krufix about this, correct? Krufix, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's... That is... Let's see... A 16. All right. Very good. As you are praying and looking up at the stars, you notice in the at, at one place in, in one of the constellations, it's not Crufix's constellation, but you notice two unusual stars, two unusual lights. They they're off to the east a bit from where you would expect, but they like open out of nowhere. But that's all that happens. With that kind of notion, I would just kind of like keep it in the back of my mind, still silently thinking to himself and whispering certain words like, My friends lose, have lost their lives, lost their limbs. I've taught myself to be in a position where grief shouldn't take over. And I've tried to keep it so that everyone around me doesn't have to deal with that. And yet it comes back. It's the secret that I've been trying to hold for you, Krufix. The secret that whatever happiness, there's still a realization that there's going to be sadness. It's less of a secret now and more of feigning ignorance. But a secret nonetheless. I just don't think I have the strength to do it. Not all the time. First, I'll have to probably stop this whole sleeping thing. It's, it's getting kind of much. But... You've given me a second chance at life. You have the power to do so, and I am willing to still serve your secrets. I'll stand up and walk back to camp right. and try again the next night. 
the next night you go out and well the next night's going to put you very close to where you're going to be at but we'll get to that uh the next night you go out i assume repeat a very similar if not the same prayer beseeching for input and again you see these two almost like stars in the distance but you know what give me a perception check definitely better than than uh, mm -hmm. religion for me uh, that roll was still a 16, though, unfortunately. All right. Antikoros, um, go ahead and roll me a perception as well. And I assume he's oh. going to stealth as well, so if you want to stealth again, Tolly. Is it no. disadvantage again, Tim? Uh, no, okay. I'm going to put you at normal mm -hmm. this time. It's, okay. There's a lot more Pro going I mean, on. You're getting closer. Probably doesn't time. matter because I rolled a six, but <laughs> that's okay. I thought mine was bad. I got an eight. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> Mr. Violet. No. All right. Good enough. Uh, so, Tali, you go out and you're, you're doing this prayer. Tikaros, you're hiding somewhere in the distance. And, um, Tikaros, I'm going to say that you, you don't necessarily notice the lights in the distance that Tali saw, but you notice that he notices something, which oh. is going to probably draw your attention to it. Ptolemaeus, as you're looking at this, you realize they look closer. And as you observe for a moment, they appear to be getting closer faster. And as you can kind of make out shadow against the background, you get this image, and Tikaros, you can see this now as well. You get this image of something with almost multiple arms, it looks like approaching towards you and falling from the stars. And it gets it, larger and larger and larger. Does it seem similar to kind of accounts of, or like at least uh, the the shadows of, of Prufix that we saw um, that well, stopped well, the tell fight? Me what you're thinking, tell me what you're thinking of Prufix would look like then. Well, from from the only time that it's very like hazy dreams that that he's seen shapes in the stars, like almost a humanoid being in the stars, but but uh, for himself. But the, I think the last time he visibly physically saw something was when I don't know how I don't remember how you described it when when the two the the other two Erewhon and and um, Mogus were fighting. He stopped them. And that was still a crew fix. So it was just kind of like the, the stars, kind of like humanoid shapes in the stars that, that stopped them, no? Yep. And I would say it's... it's. <laughs> I'm sitting here. The reason I look a little distracted is my back battery backup's going... And I'm like, what's going on? Am I about to lose power? No, apparently it decided now's a good time to do a self-test. Yeah, great. I'm going to have to work on those settings. Sorry about that. It was very <laughs> distracting. <laughs> Is the stream about to disappear? Uh, what you see and what you, what you have seen in Akros when, when this entity appeared, um, it, was, it was almost uh, a humanoid shape with multiple arms that appeared to draw out of the stars itself. Antikoros? This would be very familiar to you from the dream you recently had. Oh, she would, as soon as she saw that, she would be creeping forward to get as close as possible to it and to Tolly. Like, regardless, okay. she's like, the stealth is gone from her mind. Okay, in that case, since he rolled a 16 perception, you're going to hear somebody creeping up behind you, Tolly. <laughs> I think I would assume... Well, it's it's like kind of like like a light rustling, right? Not not a very loud rustling at all. Probably, she's fairly small statured. Okay, if that's the case. I'll I'll kind of understand and just be like, did I accidentally wake you, Tigros? <laughs> and she'll speak directly into your head, Tolly. Have you summoned Krufix? That's Krufix. I don't know what's happening right now, but I will see. 
because I'm just kind of waiting for the the being as it's like a, almost like arriving. I I don't know if it's if it's a wouldn't know if it's a um like a sign of respect or something like that. But just just to just to uh to show some sort of piety, I think I'll use a bonus action to turn on the cloak of stars to kind of match the 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 lights the the stars that are that are kind of approaching in that sense. Okay. If I could. Very good. Are you looking up at it? Are you going to bow your head? Give me an idea of your posture, both you and Tikaros. Um, I think I'm still staring at it. I think I'm still still staring and waiting, but but with with more of a yeah, I'll, I'd still be staring at it, most likely. All right. It gets Tikaros closer. Is... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tikaros. Yes. Oh, no, I just I wanted to tell you what she's doing. <laughs> she would, um, she's very excited, but containing it. So she'd put her hand out and for the first time, a spectral hand would emerge from her hand and float upwards towards this encroaching figure, almost as if it's trying to give it a high five. All right. As the figure approaches and kind of, it seems to be lowering down from the sky the arms appear to take a little bit more shape. You definitely see some arms, but the the lower limbs appear to be thinner, somewhat thinner. And you notice a glint off the end of one of them, almost a shining, reflecting the the lights from the distance. And then there is a very loud boom as it lands about 10 feet in front of you. This is loud enough that uh, whomever's on uh, watch back at camp, you definitely hear it, so just to let you know. Uh, that's between you two. You you two fight it out in chat. Figure out who's... who's uh, hey, Tam, did you know that I have a passive perception of 24? Did I mention uh, that ever? No, really? Yeah. Holy crap. Well, even if you're asleep, then it would you would hear it. I'm, I'm probably pretty militant, so I think I'd hear that. Okay. Vara, Vara, however, doesn't. She's still asleep, so it doesn't doesn't disturb her. <laughs> uh, there's a thud. There's dust that kicks up in front of you, and as the dust clears, you see a figure, his eyes glowing, standing in front of you in blood red armor with two spears. You are not Krufix. No. What were you expecting? Krufix doesn't speak to people directly. Why he has servants, messengers, and friends. I was expecting one of those, hopefully. He will take his spears and just... You've never seen him... Lay him down. He just drops them to the ground. Child of Nyctos, what is it you seek? A closer pact. I... I feel as though... It is... There is much more for me than being just a follower. I require, I will do as I ask, as I am asked to do, for Krufix, for his servants. And in return, I request additional power to to continue guarding his secrets. So you wish to negotiate both sides of a deal? Understanding that that was one of the things that... That type of logic is one of the things that I was given my second life. I suppose so. walks over and kind of leans over, and you can still see the light glistening in his eyes. What makes you think Rufix 
deigns to give mere mortals, even reborns, power. Well, at this point, I'm not necessarily asking Grufix anymore. I'm speaking with one of his friends, servants. I understand the hierarchy. Fair enough. There will be a cost, a price to pay. Any follower of Krufix knows that there are some truths that can never be shared. They must carry the burden of the truth themselves, no matter how much it burns in their heart. I've lived like that for many years. I don't think that seems to be a change. He doesn't even turn his head. Tikaros, you may leave now. Oh, okay. Nice to see you again. Backing up slowly. Starting to stealth and see if she can get away with it. I can still it. hear you. Stealthing a little further. Still trying to stay within earshot. <laughs> if you don't leave, how can I tell him his truth in secret? Okay. She leaves. Ptolemaeus, I will grant you a touch of more power that you seek, but in return, there are two prices you will pay, one for me and one in the name of Crucifix. For Crucifix, you must know the truth of prophecy. You must keep this truth to yourself. It cannot be shared until it reveals itself. And he stops, places his hand up to the sky, places his other hand on the symbol of Krufix that is emblazoned on his armor. Thinks for a moment. The son of Nyctos, while being true of heart, is nonetheless a traitor. The son of Nyctos will betray his friends. He will lead them into dark places. He will cause wounds and deep injury to them. The son of Nyctos will then, and only then, be killed. It will be your job to kill the son of Nyctos, Ptolemaeus. That is both the truth of Crufix and the price you pay for me. May I know your name? You know my name. I am Orcos. And he just kind of half smiles at one side. The bridge I burned so long ago. I welcome you with open arms and welcome the secret as well. He will put a hand out and grab yours and just kind of lift you to your feet, whether you want it or not. You know, just pull you up. Pick up my spears. Follow me. Yeah, I'll do so. Tikaros, did you go all the way back to camp or did you stop a little ways away? No, she would have she would have uh, respected that that last statement around the truth, and she would have gone back to camp. In that case, I would assume that Herax or Adrastos, whomever was doing whatever, would have probably run into you if they were pursuing the noise. So I don't know what they were going to do. So. Yeah, I just I didn't want to interrupt that. Yep, Tigros, what was that sound? <laughs> Is everyone all right? 
at Drastos. It was amazing. Tolly went out there and he summoned Crufix and then Orcos appeared. And apparently Orcos is working on behalf of Crufix and he's asking for some special secret or something's happening out there. And then I had to leave because I respected it that he has to do it by himself, but he's okay. All right. Good. Well then, we'll just wait for him here, I suppose. And about 20 minutes later, you see as Orcos and Ptolemaeus come walking out of the woods. Orcos! Back for another round? It doesn't look like you're up to it. <laughs> you think this will stop me and I, like, wave the spear hand around. Careful, you'll put your eye out. Well, gotta give you a hand for that joke. <sighs> Are you gonna be insufferable like this until you grow a new one? Oh, Orcos, I'm going to be insufferable far after I grow a new arm. You should know that about me by now. Hmm. I think you I love should our all. Chats. I think you should all wake up, get in the work. cart, and move along. Let's go now. No questions. I, uh, one of our party is unable to wake. I'll walk over and look at her. I don't think she'd be much use in this case anyway. That as it may, I worry about leaving her to the wilds. Well, we're taking the cart. Oh, wonderful. Let's go then. <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> loads far into the cart. <laughs> Is there danger nearby that would cause us to leave? No, there's danger far away and you're headed to it. Very well. And he will walk alongside the cart as it rolls that, on. Go ahead. While that happens, I'll just kind of lean over to Hyrax. I'll just... How are, how are you with animals, by the way? I've been the driver of this cart, but I suspect that one, the one on the left, that horse is, uh... Where our horse is not really, uh... happy with the way I handle everything. What makes you think that? Shiftiness. Maybe it's when I stop. It's a little too abrupt. I can hear pros protestation and stuff. I'll go check on the horse. All right. Yes, give me an animal handling. Not great. That's an 11. Uh, you can't find anything specifically wrong with the horse. Can can I at, at this time also roll animal handling to see how well I've been I've been driving said cart? Sure. That's a 13. That's also not amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, decently, decently. Roll a five on the dice. <laughs> see, I just rolled. I I rolled a ten. Let's see, that's why. Um, I'll just I'll just be like, well, if if you can't find anything wrong, I'm still slightly concerned. If if you would like, we could if we could trade off every once in a while. I'm sure. I'm sure you wouldn't mind. I would have no objection to that. Would you like me to take over now? Maybe it's been a long night. Go rest. And the Hyrax will take the reins. I'll... I'll just kind of, uh, pat him on the shoulder a little bit before I climb into the cart for a bit. And... Mm -hmm. 
think about what just happened. Uh, Orcus is actually going to uh, tap Prime on the shoulder and have him walk with him for a bit. And they're going to walk a little ways away from the cart. And you can tell they're talking. Obviously. Well, you can see Orcus's lips move, I guess, for uh, oh, really? Prime, not so much. Can I? What yes. is Orcus saying? I thought you might wonder that. Uh, why don't you give me a perception and let's see. Right. Is okay. Stone's gonna go away. That is only an eighteen. All right. Uh, you can make out part of it, and because Orcos is on the outside, you've got Prime walking alongside. So every once in a while, you know, you might get your view blocked. So you're not gonna get the full conversation of it, and you'd only get half of it anyway. Uh, but it appears he's asking him about Melitus, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the group and how he feels about the group. You can't see any responses to this, but he continues and you... Really? Well, I'm sorry about the loss. Yes, well, he seems okay. Well, he fights well. Watch where you go and watch your back. Remember, being true and loyal is the most important step. And eventually Prime will climb back on the back of the wagon. And he just, he climbs on, he, he looks around, and then curls up his knees and wraps his arm around them. And just sits there. Like a small child would do. <laughs> He's in the cart with me now, then, right? Uh, Prime is, yes. No. Yeah. I'll just lean in for a little bit and just. How are you feeling, Prime? Confused. I was always wondering. It's everything's been moving so fast lately. I've not been able to talk to anybody, but. Seems one of the most important ones. How do you feel about what happened to Agrius? I, I, I miss my friend and my teacher. I felt I had much to learn from him, and honestly, he's the only one who took me seriously in a fight. Uh, others would cheer me on, including yourself and Ariana. But he actually felt I was worthy of, of taking up arms. That was important to me. I felt like he was one of the only ones that would goad anybody on for a fight <laughs> in that sense definitely i can imagine that wherever he is in the underworld he's presently doing his best to take over either that or just to start a fight <laughs> a little chaos alongside of it if there's anything that you feel confused about at all times. Like I said before, knowing that we're family now, also, but, but that I would treat you like a brother. He kind of and tilts I would his, help in any ways. He tilts his head and looks and thank you, brother. And then you kind of catch as he turns his head enough to see Orcos and then back. I'm afraid I can't say any more, though. I assume so. Eventually. We all learn as time goes. That's how it works. I'll just kind of lean back a little bit more. Uh, and, uh, kind of 
just survey, see where where Drastos is, Tikros is, and stuff like that. Is everybody else on the wagon, or is anybody else walking? Or I'm probably on the wagon. I think I'm going to walk for a while. Okay. Obviously, We're... I'm still driving. Yeah, you're still driving. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Arex just gets off and goes for a walk. You know, the wagon will be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> well, we inspected the horse. The horse was fine, so the horse would obviously just keep going on the run. I'm... Look, I just need to speak with animals and tell the horse what I want it to do, and then I'm just going to let it. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, Orcos moves a little bit closer into the wagon and looks up at Hyrax and says, Stop the wagon. He pulls back on the reins and stop the, stops the horses. Whoa. Do you smell that? Do I smell it? With your perception, absolutely. You catch the scent of burnt wood and I don't know um, roasting meat yeah burnt wood and flesh he's gonna stop and look back at everybody Your missions are your own. I will always be around to guide, whether it be into or out of trouble. Watch yourselves. This is going to be a dark part of your journey. With that, he reaches in and grabs his spears out of the back of the cart and starts walking off. How strong is this smell, Tana? Am I getting like like what scale is this on? It's 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 better? faint at the moment, but every once in a while, as a breeze blows, which is blowing out of the east, which is the direction you're going, uh, it picks okay. up. You definitely get okay. a stronger whiff. But I'm smelling it. But I'm smelling it before I can see it, which tells me that it's probably big and not just like a campfire or something. Very possibly. All right. How far are we to to where we were supposed to go, Krimnos? How? Uh, like... You've been traveling for a couple of days, so you should be getting there any time. Is it in that? Is is the smell from that direction? Uh, east, which is where you're headed. Yes. I'll kind of clamor out to the front next to Hyrax, kind of almost in a panic, and just be like, "That's that's where Krimnos is. That smell." I don't know if it's closer, or if it's further, or if it's right there, but that is the same direction. Whatever we're heading into, do you want to take the card into it, or do you want to do it first stuff with it first? Scout it out. The latter. We have those that are... I'm going to look at VAR incapacitated in the moment. And we need them hidden. If it's scouting, I'd like to take the lead. I think you should, and then Tikros could help you as well. Meanwhile, with with I could drive the cart somewhere, and Adrastos, if you could help me hide, Adrastos, you and and Prime, help me hide the cart, to make sure that Vara is safe. Agreed. Tikros, I'll I'll just kind of lean out. Hyrax needs to s scout out a little bit further, if you could help him out with that. Oh, I would love to. All right. All right, let's get to it then. I'll take the reins. He nods and hops down from the wagon. I will now try to get as kind of follow Hyrax a little bit before 
and kind of scan the sides to see if there's any brush that's big enough to to uh kind of park the wagon into and have a happy horse and and also be able to to hide the the cart and everything well as you go to step out prime is going to say one moment and he's going to dig around and he's going to pull out a bit of mistletoe and he's going to uh, use a flint and steel to light it and burn it a little bit so that it's ashy. And he's going to take a piece of spruce and he's going to hold them together and put them up in the air. And as he does, the ash falls and the smoke comes out and kind of surrounds the entire wagon and everyone in it as he casts Pass Without a Trace. Oh, I was going to do that. He saves me the spell, so I'm happy. Rhyme, I'm so proud of you. That's incredible how fast your magic has come. Yeah, I've been studying. Very well, you've all, well, you've been enjoying all the adventures. I, uh, enjoying might not be the right word. Um, I'd prompt, but great job. Well done, brother. I'm afraid Amazing. this only works for those of you who are nearby. So. Arax and Tikaros, and either I go with you or you're on your own. I assumed I would help hide the wagon. Uh, actually, I believe... Let's see. Okay, for the duration of each creature, you choose within 30 feet of you. So that we have to remain within 30 feet if you would do that. Okay. And that's all right. I have my own alternatives. So uh, while Hyrax and Tikaros head on down the trail, uh, the rest of you will hide the wagon, which will be much easier now that it's uh, passing without any, leaves no trail on the ground. And, it's and as Hyrax moves along, he is going to reach up and touch his, uh, this, his pendant with the uh, falcon talon on it and whisper a quiet prayer to Nylea and then touch Tikaros on the shoulder and uh, also cast Pass Without Trace. All right. So I assume you're going to go ahead and tell, head forward until you run into something of uh, meaning. Would that be? That would be change? correct. All right. Go ahead and give me stealth checks. All right. So with a plus 10. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. That is... Oh, 29. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love Pass It Out. Somehow Chase. I have a feeling rolling the dice here doesn't even matter. 31. <laughs> <do it>. oh. <laughs> All right. Very good. You make your way down the road, and eventually you see a marker stating that, you know, you're approaching Krimnos. And it's about, oh, let's say a quarter mile ahead. As you get closer, you can, the smell gets stronger. And as you crest one of the hills and kind of enter into the flat land that's going to lead into Krimnos itself, you notice the sky has an orange tint in the distance. You make your way closer. How, but how close do you want to get? I don't want to interfere with what you want to do roleplay-wise. Um, however close I need to get until I see what I think are people. Okay. Either survivors or enemies. You get, you approach the gates and the wall of Krimnos, and you can see clearly the gates have been torn off, ripped away from the wall. And the flames are the buildings inside of Krimnos. There are a few on the outskirt that you can see that are burned out. They're just smoldering. But there's still active flames going. 
do I see any evidence that this was a minotaur attack? Keeping in mind that I have monstrosities as a favorite enemy. Give me a survival check with advantage, please. That is... Uh, 22. Absolutely, you see the marks, the prints of large hooves. And there are markings on the walls once you get close enough that you can see. This was definitely marked. You can see where clans of minotaurs have marked their defeat of the city on the outside of the walls. Does it look like any of them are still here? That you can't tell from where you're at. And I will say that if you move any closer in, you're going to be in the midst of the flames and stuff. It will not be as easy to be stealthy if there is anybody watching. You will have are to go, any... you either have to go over the wall or through the city gates. And if you go through okay. the gates, that's pretty obvious. I'm going to go over the wall. I have a climb speed now. Okay. Um, of 35 feet. I'm going to at least go up onto the wall and see if I can get enough of a vantage point. Okay. Um, you. And if need be, I will throw down a rope for Tikaros. All right. When you reach the top of the wall, you lower the rope down for Tikaros and then begin to scan the area. And you notice on a platform a bit away that's still smoldering, it looks to be fairly stable, at least it's not on fire, figure moves. And you can only see the silhouette, but they're definitely holding a bow. Do they seem to have spotted me? Uh, no, they do not. They appear to be watching the front gate. Over the wall. Um, I am going to clamber down the wall and see if I can find cover to get closer. All right. Big Rose, what are you going to do? I'm going to, I'm kind of studying Hyrax this whole time, like how he moves, how his eyes move, and just trying to take in every detail and just shadowing him totally what he's doing. Okay. So you're going to go over the wall as well. I will say yep. that if you're following what Hyrax is doing, you would see the figure as well in the distance. Uh, you make it over the wall. Uh, there's a little bit of crinkle, even as cautious as you are. There's burnt wood. There's piles of things. And it makes some noise when you hit the ground, but it doesn't seem to have gained attention over the sound of the crackling of fire. And then you pick up the, the moaning, the crying in the distance. But from your, where you're at now, it appears that the entire village of Krimnos has been raised. It's burned. I'm going to put you two on hold for a moment. Uh, you guys find a good location for the wagon. Uh, you're able to secure it. What are your intents from there? Um, with Prime's help, I suppose we could get closer. I don't want to ruin the scouting for Hyrax, and I'm not the quietest of individuals, but we could at least be closer if danger breaks out. Well, if you're riding on the wagon, the only thing that would be making noise is the wagon. So we would go with a stealth for the wagon and see how quietly it could approach. I would rather, I'd rather not approach too, too close with the wagon, though. No, I don't think so. So I suppose if Prime stays here and keeps the wagon hidden with his impressive magic, we could approach a bit and at least be closer. In case there's trouble. How about this? Um, as I'm kind of speaking, I will kind of ro rotate 
basically the wagon facing the other way so that the the horse is pointed back towards the road that we were at okay and kind of try to back the cart back into the bush and just you know with just kind of like look at Adrastos and Prime and just be like okay this way we will have some sort of way to escape as soon as possible at least with the wagon we don't need to spend any more time rotating the wagon or anything if there is trouble that we the four of us cannot deal with we leave agreed we've lost far too much and we're not at we're not at full fighting strength gear wise or in other ways so if the fire is originating from Krimnos. You and I will only be in, in range enough to, to hear any sort of signal from Hyrax or Tikros. This whole, this whole scouting is on them. We can't ruin this. No, of course. We just need to stay within hearing distance, but... They signal that they are in danger they cannot escape from. Then we go we in. must intervene. Of course. Do you well, have... Well, Ptolemaeus, I take the lead from you. Well, let's get going then. Just you and I. Prime, if you could keep your magic up, keep Vara safe, we're trusting you. I will do my best. Brother. Stay safe, then. Let's go. Um, in an attempt to make as little noise as possible, um, <clears throat> Adrasus is going to take the three javelins he has remaining that aren't tied to his hand, and he's going to hold them in his shield arm, take okay. off the bodkin, and leave it in the cart. So he's just carrying them so they don't rattle around. Okay. All right. Very good. So you will make your way on onto it. It'll take you a little bit longer. I Are you trying to be stealthy on your way up? Or just quiet and take your time, because there is a difference there. Uh, knowing that they're, they've been ahead of us for that long, I think I wouldn't want to take my time. I want to be in earshot as soon as possible, so I would prefer the stealth route. Okay. And that's just my choice. I, I'll, I'd relay it to, to Drasto, so just... As soon as we can get into earshot, we'll wait there. But I don't want to take too much time getting there. Of course not. Okay. Roll stealth for me. Hey. I apologize in advance. <laughs> what is that? It's a 14. Okay. On my end. Wow! Okay, Adrastos. That's an 11. All right. That's good for him with a plus zero and disadvantage. You know, you know what it is? Yeah. You have less mass it's, now. Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say. Yeah. Way less, yeah. <laughs> less things swinging around, too. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. You make your way, and you can see as you get close, you see what Harax and Tikaros have seen. The place is, is burnt. The gates are broken. And when you get to be, let's say, about 50 meters from the front of the gate, off the road, of course, you don't want to be in the middle of it. An arrow. How tall is the wall? Oh, Sorry? Okay, never mind. How tall yeah. is the wall from here? The, tall, the wall is about uh, 15 feet tall surrounding. Yeah. Okay. An arrow is going to hit the dirt. A little ways in front of you. Obviously, it's it wasn't aimed directly at you, and it's hard to say that it would have the range that somebody could aim that well <clears throat> at that distance anyway. It was a flaming arrow, so it was meant to be seen. Um, Just out of habit, if Adrasto sees the arrow at all, he's going to kind of move in front of Tully and put his <laughs> shield up 
And then when okay. it falls at their feet, I think it's a signal, Ptolemaeus. Not one of ours. We don't use arrows. No, but a warning, not an invitation. I will jump back to you guys in a moment. Let's go to Hyrax and Tikaros, who've been inside the wall, pursuing a bit. What's going on on the inside of the wall? Well, did I just see an arrow get fired in the air? It would be a few minutes later, so you might have gotten to do some surveying and stuff first, but yes, you definitely saw. All right. And it came from uh, the person getting... you had seen. All right. And the person is probably a human, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. They're inside this burned out husk and they're kind of they're not standing up they're kind of in there you just happen to catch a glimpse of them and their face is covered okay. but just rough approximation humanoid uh probably like probably human probably human but could be something else all right but doesn't look like a minotaur definitely not no all right Are they within 60 feet of us? Oh, absolutely. If I'm judging. Absolutely, yeah. And can I see them, but not properly see them? Yeah, they're, like, to they're going to be them. about they're going to be about 25, 30 feet up in this. Yep. Not quite a tower. It used to be a building. It's what's left of the building that they're standing on the edge of. I am going to step out with my hands up. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, I'm not here to harm anyone. I am a Satessan Ranger. I would like to heal any wound. As soon as you say this, the person kind of jumps and starts and drops the bow out of their hand. And they're, they're visibly shaken. No, no, you, you can't be unclean, unclean, plague. I have no plague, friend. No, the, the town. Unclean. He looks around. What plague is this? And he just kind of, kind of slumps in it. He'll die like the rest of us now. Um. Uh. Um. Uh oh. Eric, I think we need to get out of here. Uh. In a moment. If he's right, then whatever damage there is to be done has been done. I need to know. What plague is this? It was not a black substance of some sort, was it? Are you saying this loud enough for the person who's 30 feet up in the air to hear you? Or mm. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? What plague was this? It was not some sort of black substance, was it? Well, no. Uh, just... Damn. Then just a moment. Plainly. Just a moment, and he will begin to climb his way down to you. As he does, pieces of the building he's hiding in, you know, are like breaking off. Very treacherous making his way down. Hmm. He reaches the ground and makes his way over to you, and still wearing the mask that is covering all but his eyes. He's in a hood and a garment. His hands are wrapped. And he walks and he stops about ten feet away from you. I'm sorry, friends. I, I tried to warn people. Uh, if those are your friends on the road. Yell to them now and tell them to stay away. Well, I can do that part. I can clamber down the wall and run. No, and don't leave. Further. You can't leave. You can't spread it. And he will actually step forward like, and, like he's going to grab you and then stop himself. No, you cannot leave now. Yeah, okay. Don't you understand? Tim, Tim, I'd like to roll insight to see if this guy is losing it or not. Uh, okay, I can already tell you yes, but go ahead. 
I mean, but if 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 this play does it, has he lost the plot? That's what is this play a delusion or is he <laughs> mad from the play? All right. Uh, that is actually a twenty-seven. Oh my god! Wow. The man is absolutely terrified. You can see it in his motions. You can hear it in the tremble in his voice. And he is panicked at the thought that anyone would leave and take this somewhere else. This Primnos was burned by Minotaurs, was it not? Well, yeah, yes, yes. The, Minot the Minotaurs rode in here uh, two days ago demand demanding we hand over the returned. The returned. We have none. We have no returned here. We never did. Okay, so Ptolemaeus over there has clearly figured something out, but uh <laughs> So as Adrastos <laughs> Uh I'm I'm not catching on yet, but that's all right. They they didn't believe us and they They started with children and to get us to turn them over, but we told them we had none. And what of this plague you speak of? Then, when did that begin? Then they killed the mayor. They put him in the street and tied him between horses and they dragged him apart. The sheriff tried to stop them, but the big one, the one with the cracked horn, he, he took him as sport. He killed him slowly over, over hours. Don't think about it. The and plague. my wife. When they finally found no returned here. They praised the cleansing of Primnos, extolled Erebus, set everything on fire. And he just kind of stands there shaking his head, looking at his hands. They killed everyone. Slowly, they've killed us all. And then the plague. Tell me of this plague. After the Minotaurs left, a man came in, a hooded man. I never saw his face. Came into town and looked at the remaining children and played with them, take their mind off the pain. He gathered food and made food for those who were, who were in the streets. And he helped us build small houses in the town square. Just little places for those who survived but lost their homes. He even helped us, he helped us bury our dead. Why would he do that? Perhaps he meant to show you some kindness. Kindness. When we were all gathered in the, the courtyard in the, the new, the place we'd made to live, 
He extolled our good fortune. He said we were going to be a start of a new way. That we may have lost it all here, but the Nyx would welcome us into the, the next creation. He rambled on about a, the new world being free of the whim of so-called gods. The creator above the creation, that's what he said. And then he walked to the center of the square. And he set this round, this ball, in the middle of the courtyard. And did this ball have an image of a fingerprint? Yes. Yes, it began to glow, and there, there was a fingerprint. Yes. And it, not thinking, as much as he's tried to avoid contact with you, he reaches out and places his hand on your shoulder and says, Yes. And then it, it began to glow, but not, not glow. Can darkness glow? Have you ever seen the night shine? This colorless smoke, fog, a wall of, of nothing began to billow and stretch out across the courtyard. At first we thought nothing, nothing, it was just a show, maybe. And he slowly undoes the bandage on his arm. And as he gets through the first layer, you can see the blood and the ooze that has blackened and grayed and, and greened against it as he continues to take it off. And you see underneath muscle and bone, sinew. And, but there's no color to it. It's as if all color has just been drank away. And then we started to, to fade. And now there's nothing left. And you can join us. You can join us in the courtyard. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what will become of you. How many of you remain? Ten, no, ten, ten, no, nine. Nine. Alanex. Alanex was the strongest. He was going to go see the eye. He's going to go seek guidance from the, the eye. from the gods he thought the eye could help us surely she would be able to help us through this he disappeared into the raven's wood I see. We're, we're gathered at the temple of Farika, if you would like to come and face the end with us. I have no intention of facing the end, let alone in a temple of Farika. You can't leave. You've been touched by this now. You can't take it anywhere else. What if I went into the wood, still seeking your friend? Seeking answers, if you found any. 
He's going to look at what's left of his hand, which continues to decay as you watch. I can't stop you. But know wherever you go, this follows. How quickly does it set in? For those who, who touched the smoke, it was, it was instant. Those who are outside of it, a few hours. Damn, how do I feel right now? <laughs> Give me a constitution saving throw. And I'm going to, while you're doing that, Tikaros, you were going to warn them somehow, your friends out on the road. So what does Tikaros do? Yeah, I think that whole time that they were talking, she'd be eyeballing the rope that she came up on. And at some point, we'll just make a jump for it and head down and out. Okay. He, he totally doesn't even notice you're gone. He's so focused on Hyrax. I rolled low. How low? You definitely, you caught that smoke and it makes you cough a little bit, which gives you a pause for a moment as you look at this rotting man in front of you. It makes you a little unsettled. Maybe uh, not feeling your strongest. Yeah. Um, I am going to walk to the edge of the village to at least see if if my companions are still trying to enter. Uh, well, I, let's see what you see of Tikaros because she went over the wall. Where is Tikaros at this point? I I'll think, just go right yeah. to the gates. I'll just go right to the gates at this point right. to watch. Okay. Uh, she wouldn't have, she, as she was leaving, Hyrax would hear in his head, I'm going to warn the others. You would have heard that in your head as she kind of made her exit. And I will make my way down the rope, try and spot a dressed Doss and Tolly. And at this point, I will make sure I stay 60 feet away from them because okay. that is the distance to which I can speak into their heads. You see the arrow that's in the dirt that is burning out now. Um, Adrastos is on the other side, uh, probably recovered from blocking with the shield at this point because it's been a few minutes. And you see them in the distance. All right. I'll just see if they notice me, wave my hands. I think I was on alert after the arrow, so I'll probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could clearly see her. And I'll just put one Even with up. plus 10 to stealth, she can't hide herself if she doesn't oh, yeah. want to. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Um, and I'll just speak. I'll just pick Adrastos randomly. And you'll hear in your head, don't come any closer yet. Minotaurs have been here. They've decimated the village. And our hooded friend has unleashed a plague. We're speaking to a survivor. And we're not sure if we are now infected. So best if you just stay until we can find out what's going on. And you can't respond, but that's what you hear. It's okay, I have a loud voice. <laughs> what minotaurs, Tikaros? Did um, one have a broken horn? Oh, does she want to tell you? <laughs> I can't hide anything from you. They were looking for a tent, and they decimated the village. That's all she'll say. Um, Adrastos's hand will tighten on the javelin so much that they will there will be an audible cracking sound. He's not going to break them, but it's going to crack. Probably long gone by now. Of seeing this flame. I know they're not there, and I know that going in the village will not help anyone, but 
Kikoros, don't go back. You need to stay out here. If you can send a message to Hyrex, tell him to get out as well. If he's not already infected, then I don't want him. And then I'll hold up my javelin arm to end up like me. Are there any other options? Ask, ask her. I can't really speak that loud. Well, Are there any actually... other options? Uh, I'm imagining that Hyrax can hear this booming voice as well at this point, so I won't have to do the relay race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, Adrasos is not attempting to be subtle anymore. Hyrax, you should get out of there. I'll yell up with my voice. If I'm infected, I may take it with me wherever I go. But if you are not infected, the longer you're there, the more likely you will be exposed. They have a friend who went to go see someone called the Eye to seek answers from the gods. He never returned. I thought that I might go see what has become of him. In the Ravenwood. Then I suppose we are headed to the Ravenwood. Do not approach me too closely. I will keep my distance, but I will not allow you to go by yourself. Scouting is one thing. This is something entirely different. Great. Yes, we're all going. Is that a fair compromise, Hyrax? If that is your decision... I cannot tell you otherwise. It is. Irex, if you see the signs on any of your extremities, remove them as rapidly as possible. A finger is better than an arm. I do not think that the illness dwells in limbs. I think I inhaled something. Adrasos is going to close his eyes in in the oh fuck horror movie moment. <laughs> and just nod and say, He, he, he suddenly well. visualizes himself <laughs> in the center of this complex in this deep black smoke. <laughs> Unable to breathe. PTSD moment, right, Adrastos? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there's any solace... The further we stay apart, the more of the Ravenwood we can we can search. Agreed. Right, then we shouldn't waste any time. Hyrax turns around, lowers his voice, and says to the man he's been talking to, I know you don't think I should leave, but I can't give up yet. And if I find answers, I will return. If I can save you, I will. Thank you for trying. If you, if you find Alan X, if he's, oh. if you find anything left, please. She did approach. I'll return it to you, if I can. No, burn it, destroy it, so that no one can touch it and nothing can spread. And when you fall, make sure that you are burned as well. Can't take a chance on this spreading to anyone else. Perhaps you are right. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Stay alive. And then he leaves. All right. Icaros, the message stone in your pocket becomes extremely cold. You take it out, you get a message. Ariana, so sorry to hear of Adrastos. What word of Krimnos? 
Oh, man. I always have bad news for her lately. This is terrible. Ugh. Addressed us, you hear again in your head. Ariana just got back to me on the stone. She says sorry for the loss of your arm. And then I'll speak into it. Is it a nice day today, Tam? Like it's, it's night. It's night. Uh, the sky's it's a bit cloudy time. and you've That's probably right. got the plague. So your choice. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Hi, Ariana. Krimnos is a mess. Destroyed by minotaurs and hooded figure, plague, fingerprint, ball. Uh, we are headed to the Ravenswood seeking the eye, I think, or maybe it was the oracle. I don't remember. Hope you're okay. All right. Some of that got through. I love it. <laughs> All right. The Ravenswood is slightly to the north. It's an area that is uh, known for thick overgrowth and is rumored to be one of the paths that the returned take. Sounds like the perfect terrain for a gloom stalker. <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, so how are you going to approach traveling into the Ravenswood? Um, I'm going to stalk into the gloom. Uh, I will. Go ahead, Harax. Um, no, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I was going to say I'll follow your lead, but then I realized I can't see you. So, um, I mean, 60 feet away with, with Tikros was the best that we got. So I think staying, well, I, I would, I would personally stay at that range as well, still. Well, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll stay back from him, but we won't be able to see him in the dark. No. Um, Do we want lights? I can space them out. Just let me know what's best. That's... That's entirely up to Hyrex. If he wants to stay hidden, that's his prerogative. Perhaps Hyrex, since you are so adept at clinging to the shadows, you can leave us signs so we know what direction to go. Broken branches or scrapes in the ground. Uh, so if you're shouting all this for him to hear, uh, he is actually going to take out his wood carving tools, uh, specifically the knife. And yeah, he will try and carve signs into the trees as he goes. Yeah. Um, and Adrastus will try and follow the signs. Just periodically. Right. So um, what we've got and... is Hyrax. Is Tikaros with Hyrax or is Tikaros hanging back? No, she has this weird notion that she didn't touch the creature and she's going to be just fine okay. so she will stay away from hyrax but still a little away from the others as well so maybe right. she's second in the order how, how far from hyrax how far behind would you stay Forty feet 40 feet okay so you're bringing up the middle 40 feet away uh are you going to cast lights or not, because that would be far enough that you your lights, if they were with you, yeah. they would not interfere with Pyrex. I will definitely cast Dancing Lights, and I'm going to okay. leave one of them with me. I'm going to put one with Adrastos and one with Tolly. Okay. Adrastos will narrow oh, sorry, his eyes as it hurts his dark vision. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. And she futzes that one out. Tolly, do you want one? Yeah, you do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> do you want one, Tully? Tully, you want one? Tully, Tully, you want one? 
I do imagine <laughs> that Adrastos' eyes have that light predator shine. So Atoli and Adrast. So we've got <laughs> Hyrax, 40 feet back. We've got Tikaros. Who's next? Me, Adrastos. Okay. And how far back are you? Um, out of respect to Tikaros's spacing, 40 feet back from Tikaros. Okay. And Ptolemaeus, how far are you from Adrastos? Um, around 20 feet, just so I could not have the dancing lights and not blind him. Okay. All right. Um. Not a split party, but a very spread out party. Excellent. Mm. Hyrax, it looks like you're going to be leading this group. I need a survival check, please. All right. Um, all right. So you do. And this Oreos. That is going to be 14 plus 6 is a dirty 20. All right. God, As you are making your way towards these woods, which most of the woods around here are that bright green, lush kind of a color. Even in the dark, you can tell there's this living light about it. As you move towards the raven's wood, the trees are alive, but the bark is, is darker. The leaves don't grow as green. They're kind of a muted yellowish green color almost like dead plants but they're alive and they grow mm. and you make your way about 10 feet into this wood line when you come across a robed figure bandages on its hands face down on the ground And I can assume that this is their friend, can I not? Well, it, I don't know. I don't have, uh, he didn't tell me anything else about him except his name. Uh, but does this figure seem to be dead to me? Uh, would you like to give a medicine check at a distance? Uh, or how would you like to make this determination? Bottom with a stick? <laughs> I'll call out. The what was the name of the man again? Alanex. Are you Alanex? There is no response. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, can I tell roughly what direction he was going? Because I realize now that I d do not know the way to the eye. <laughs> exactly. With a 20, I would say you can tell from the tracks the direction and the way the body fell. And the fact that the arm, one arm is stretched out, like, continuing on, it kind of oh, points the way. <laughs> the corpse counts. That's fine. Um, I will mark a nearby tree with, uh, let's see, what symbol should I use? Minotaur symbols are great. How could I do that one? I can't maybe, read Minotaur. Maybe a sign of an era boss, you know? Uh, no. Uh, Man. <laughs> yeah, definitely leave a I'm sign not, of era boss. And I'm, not asking, I'm, not down asking, trees. I'm not asking Tam anymore. He just wants to traumatize the Drastos. Um, it's my job. Uh, <laughs> you, you draw part of an arm. <laughs> something to do with Point, the... Uh, pointing in the direction. Do, I'll, I'll I, scratch out a little... Uh, Bird claw. Okay. <laughs> Man. Adrastos will remember this. <laughs> Against the DM? I don't think that helps. <laughs> oh, 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 it does. <laughs> he has a lot of NPCs. <laughs> <clears throat> Some are even named. Uh, and yeah, and I will continue moving in that direction. Uh, remi reminding Tam that as a gloom stalker, I am technically invisible in darkness to creatures yep. that require dark vision to see me. Totally understand. As you move along and continue on this path, the hill 
side kind of grows up around you, and you find yourself walking in these these valleys, these these almost they'd be tunnels except they're open on the top. And you can see the, the roots of the trees that sometimes grow across, but growing along the sides of this. It's like someone just took a plow and furrowed in between the trees and made these paths. And very soon you reach diverging paths. You see some paths that Y into where you're at, some T's, some that Y across. And you end up in a place where you have several paths that you could go. So you're going to have to pick a direction. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Roll me a survival. Survival. Are there any animals in this wood, by the way, that I've noticed? Uh, not that you've noticed thus far. That's worrying. <laughs> Usually, even at night, you will find something. Uh, that is only an eight on survival. An eight. Excellent. Yeah, I rolled a two on the die. <laughs> you walk into a corridor of these, and I'm going to try and get you guys on a map here. If it will let me roll 20, please cooperate. Let's try it again, because I see it didn't move the map. Let me know when you guys can see them. Well, it's going to be dark. Let me, let me, give me a moment. I'm having roll 20 fun. As often happens. Ah, roll 20. There we go. What do you know? It actually did a reveal on the reveal areas. Whoa, found it. Hopefully you can see that section that you're in. Feel free to drag tokens over there. I'm going to illuminate a little right. bit more of it because you could actually see a bit more than that. Am I also over there? This is where you are at. That's where I am right now trying to figure yes. out where to go. So you would be, uh, if I ping it, let's see if I can ping over here. Yeah, you'd be right about there. Okay. Hopefully that pinged okay for you. And you've turned different directions and, and tried to figure out which way you're going. I would say you had been headed north, so upward on the map would be north. Okay. Mm, okay. So let's see. Are there any... Can I see if there are like tracks of anything going one way or the other more recently than others. Give me a survival check. Okay. And putting us all on this map is going to look so weird. That's better. That's a 19. <laughs> uh, you see two sets of tracks. The first set of tracks uh, appears to belong to a horse, and they appear to be slightly, slightly older tracks. It's really hard to tell, ascertain the exact age because of the, the density, and you're not used to this woods. The other set of tracks, the closest approximation you could do is a bear? Hmm. Okay. Avoiding those tracks, that doesn't sound nice. Well, they're both going the same direction. I mean, you're oh, in this no. you're in this alley tunnel way, so. Okay, so yeah, the other path you're talking about would be above, right? Yeah, you were this. You were headed this direction where I'm pinging. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so I am going to avoid that though. I'm going to try and scale up this wall. Okay. Uh, the wall is about the wall is about twenty feet high, and it's covered in roots and and tree parts. So it's not going to be difficult to make your way up to the top of it. Okay. All right. 
natural climb speed of 35 should be able to get up there. Yep, no problem. And from the top of this, you you can see around a little bit, and I'm trying to reveal areas, and you know, Roll20 and I have this uh, love-hate relationship. Uh -huh. it, it's kind of like uh, I'm a third-party uh, content creator, and, and it's WotC, and this is the OGL. I'm sorry, I had to do that. It's good uh -huh. not exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now for posterity, uh -huh. I've made my statement on the OGL, so we're all good. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. So this is what you can make out from where you're standing. Uh, so there seems to be sort of a natural bridge here. Those are the roots of the trees. There's, it's tree roots. They're fairly thick, so it's fairly stable. It will hold your weight. But uh, two or three people, it, it would probably crack the roots. Okay. Well, at the moment, it is just me, so I'm going to cross over. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave some sort of... Hmm. I wonder if there's anything I could carve like nearby to show that I went up. There, as I mentioned, the walls are basically made out of tree roots. So if the walls are made out of tree roots, I would have tried to leave to carve some sort of marking in the cliff wall on my way up to show that I am ascending. Okay. So like a finger pointing up? Kind of like <laughs> that maybe <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, um. i'm in a funny mood i can't help it all right no it's good so i'm going to uh note that you place that mark right about that location there and it's not showing up give me just a moment let's try that on the map layer so right about there would be where your mark is is that fair sure Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I know you probably climbed up the other side and came across. I'm just uh, making it easy on myself. Yeah. No, that's completely fair. Um, All right. I'm going to then head up. All right. See what there is to see. All right. Let me. I'm going to zoom out a little bit for the camera's purpose. So give me just a moment. All right. Okay. There's a whole area here. Keeping my eyes peeled as I cross another of these root bridges. Wait, let me get the reveal working. As you cross over, you notice wandering around in this one area a white, pale white horse with a horn with gold spiral growing out of its forehead. No, there were unicorns in Theros. I hmm. which do unicorns speak if they can't lose they understand. I will cautiously approach the creature. Mm -hmm. Do I know anything about unicorns? Uh, you just said you didn't know there were unicorns in Theros, so Hyrax, I would assume that's, not. <laughs> that's me. That's me. I don't know if Hyrax knows that or not. Um, he lives there. I don't. They're, they're yeah. creatures and they're magical creatures, so um, I will leave it up to you unless you want to roll for it, in which case it's going to be a nature type check. Let's see. Okay, nature then. Yeah. All right, I don't fail this time. Since you have crawled down into this area, I said, it. "Don't fail me, die." <laughs> Look, suffice to say, Hy Hyrax didn't know there were unicorns there. Us. I rolled so, up that one. Apparently, okay. no, you were not aware that there were unicorns in the Theros. Never heard of it. Didn't even know what a unicorn is. Never heard of it. Yeah, I'm 
Yeah, Z, you are correct. I am not using that die anymore, at least tonight. <laughs> you are in timeout. Oh, man. Would you like to borrow my dice prison? You're welcome to. Uh, um, yeah, so... I'm going to voice sort of up on this bridge and look down. So you're still up in the air, okay? Uh, it is going, you know, what? are you still walking stealthily and trying not to be seen? Because it is darkness. Yeah, for the moment. Okay. Well, you know what? Roll me a uh, stealth with advantage. Okay. That's better. That is 23. The unicorn walks for a moment, stops, and then looks up at you. Kind of flares its nostrils a little bit. Wow. It and takes, really well. takes a step back and, yeah, that was a 20 on the die. So. Wow. Plus, plus modifiers, so die. I felt pretty good about that. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, seeing that he's been spotted, he stands up straight. And it looks at you, looks over its shoulder, and shakes its head. I'm not going to hurt you. All at once. You hear a voice inside your head. I never thought you would hurt me. I was warning you. And then it lowers its head and continues to walk back the direction you came. Taking this fork here. Warning me of what? You said, I assume you say this out loud. Yeah, out loud. Caught very off guard that this strange horse has talked to him in his head. I'm going to stop for a moment. Look back at you. Walk over. And look up. And you can kind of tell where it's looking in the branches that you're standing on. And as you look down inside of those, you see a very large owl feather. Ooh. I'm going to pick it up, first of all, because it's really cool. But I'm going to inspect it. Mm. Give me a nature check. All right. And by the way, the rest of you would have, at this time, at least, uh, let's see, who was next? I, I, I lost my order. Tikaros is next. Tikaros, you would have come to the point where you see the, the hand pointing upwards. You would have no idea how far ahead of you Irax is, however, since he went up. And you are now in a twisty trails. Uh, it's a dirty 20. All right. Um, it is definitely an owl feather, but this would be a very big owl. You would estimate an owl this size would be not much smaller than the horse. Maybe, I don't know, uh, bear size. Right. Yeah. I, I had a feeling when you said something like bear tracks. Okay. Um, all right, Tim. Did Hyrax know that there were owl bears in Theros? <laughs> there are owl bears in Theros? He didn't know about unicorns. What does he know about this? Uh... Keep, 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 now, now, keep in mind, once again, my favorite enemy is monstrosities. So technically, I'm supposed to get advantage on. Uh, check to recall information about them. 
Okay, well, uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a uh, nature check? I was about to mention that. That all bears on monstrosity, so you should probably yep. get it. <laughs> that is a 15. You are familiar with the fact, the rumor. You've never seen one. You don't know anyone who has seen one. But there is a rumor that in some places, in some of the, the deeper woods, uh, around the Skull of Vale, for example, uh, in the woods that are not traveled much, because they are, they are not creatures that are sociable. But yes, they are rumored to exist. Uh, and before the unicorn leaves, I'm going to ask you one more question. Do you know in which direction I can find the one they call the eye? And what, while you ask that, Tikaros, I had mentioned that you found the pointy finger or sign thingy going up. What are you going to do? I would climb up. Try okay. and find the best kind of handholds and yeah, go up. All right. Follow the sign. All right. Uh, you would make your way. Which side are you climbing up on the side with the sign? Yes. Okay. Because otherwise, I don't know how you would find anything. Uh, you climb up, your light brims over the top. Hyrax, you would see this light just as you're asking this question of this horse. So, Tikaros, you climb to the top of this and Hyrax turns to you. And apparently asks you if you know anything about the location of the eye. Hi, Rex. Are you feeling all right? Uh, is, is the unicorn still there? Uh, yes, it is. He glances up at Tikaros and uh, says, just a moment. And looks back down at the unicorn. He looks back and... I don't know why you would want to seek that one. But these woods are filled with many dangers. I'll try to... mark some path you but I'm going a different way so you will be on your own I thank you for your help and the unicorn is going to move on around the bend and out of sight he looks back up I have encountered something curious a horned horse or so it seemed but it could speak to me inside my mind i suspect it was some sort of woodland spirit well i wish i had seen that that sounds amazing And there's something else. He pulls out the owlbear feather. It's pretty. It's so Adras bad. sorry, Adrastos at about this point, you would pull up on the area where the symbol is going up, because again, none of you know how far apart how far behind you are of anyone else. You can tell there's a light coming from above you, and you would hear Irax or I'm sorry. Tikaro saying, that's pretty. I think you're muted. You're right, I am. <laughs> so I guess I would make my way up and just kind of like park myself here. If it'll let me. There I am. Okay. All right. 
just kind of observing and using my active listening skills. All right. Wait, if he's on the map that far, that means I should be in here too. Yep. You're, you're probably coming up on the same uh, spot down there on the ground. You'd actually be down here to begin with. Yeah. In that valley. I was trying to pull my token in. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so it should be around here. Okay. Well, you'd be in the valley, though. I'm going to move you down. Oh, here. oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down here. Yep. In the valley. Way down in the valley. Funny. In the cave. The valley so far. All right, Irax, you were showing her the pretty feather. Yeah, um, I believe this belongs to some sort of predator. I've heard rumors of creatures like these. Never seen one myself. Okay, so we'll be careful. Yes, I think we should. Uh, and then he looks around, uh, remembering that the unicorn said that uh, it would leave a path for him. And he looks around for any sign of that. Uh, as you look around, you can see down where the unicorn was standing, it's obviously leaving footprints. They seem to have a bit of a glow to them. But after a couple of minutes, since you've been talking for a bit, that glow fades. Oh, he's going to hurry on and see if he can find more of these footprints. He'll hop down. Uh, or climb down, rather. Not, not, gonna, <laughs> not planning to take fall damage. Um, yeah, 20 feet. He'll climb like, down you know, and start. You're fine. Okay, he'll climb down and start following uh, Unicorn footprints. Okay. Uh, the path goes down this trail here, where you saw the unicorn go, of course. All right, he'll head this way. And I'm going to ask what everyone else is doing, because you've started to bunch up a little bit now. Hey, Gross, you see as Hyrax jumps yeah, down. Social and kind distancing, of... guys. Sorry, go ahead, Hyrax. Oh, I said social distancing, guys. <laughs> Plague. Yeah, I thought about naming it COVID, but I just couldn't be that on the nose with my humor. <laughs> no. <laughs> lockdown, lockdown. Anyway, uh, Tikaros, uh, Hyrax has dropped down into the valley and run back around behind you. Uh, what would you cool. like to do? I will stay. I'm going to close the distance a little to maybe 30 feet away from him now, but I will okay. follow just directly in his footsteps. All right. Um, Adrastos, you can see this happening, so I would assume you would follow as well. Yep, I'll close Ptolemaeus, the distance as well. And Ptolemaeus, you would see it as well. So everybody's there, and you're kind of following these alleys and valleys, which they're kind of twisty, and there's a lot of uh, branches. So at some point, it might become difficult to follow at these distances, just to let you know. But Hyrax, you follow these tracks for about an hour of back and forth through switchbacks and stuff. And you finally reach a point where they just stop. And it is at a Y in the road. I'm seeing. <laughs> you know, it's never Sorry, an X in the road. It's never a K in the road or a G in the road. You know? It's a fork in the road. There can be a fork in the road. Fork in the road, yeah. yeah. Like Muppet style, where there's actually a giant fork. A giant fork. <laughs> Which forking road are you going to follow? Ah. Which indeed. So I don't see any further tracks. The tracks the stop at this point. Mm. The unicorn did say it was going a different way from him. Okay, is there any other obvious marker that would, well, or inobvious marker that would? Show I'm him? going to say no. Both trails look equally inviting. He, so he's just, he's just going to have to figure it out. You Man, you know what choice. would be great right now? You know what would be great right now? If I could consult the bubbles. <laughs> 
Uh, that's just not something that I do. Oh, Hyrax, tricky bones are for oracles of Mogus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it's time to announce my mounts my new subclass on the cleric of Mogus. <laughs> you plagiarist. No, um, it's fine. Uh, I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> Actually, a paladin of Mogus? No. <laughs> um, okay, so what am I going to do? Am I going to flip a coin here? Can I flip a cracking coin? It's up to you. Take a crack at it. Like that. Fracking, cracking. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. One is left, two is right. Left it is. All right. You take the leftmost path, and you're following around. It twists around for quite a while. Until... Give me just a moment, because I'm moving you to a new map. I just That's... got on this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't help that you're social distancing. Nobody put that on there but yourself. <laughs> I'd have put these all on one page, but, you know, I was lazy. So, all right. The trees but around you, uh, you should be able to see the new one now, Irax. Uh, the trees around you in the it's grown a little bit more green, a little more lush. You actually kind of get that that scent of water that there's water around here somewhere. Whoops, wrong person. That made me bad. There we go. Hold on. All right, there we are. Water. Okay. Hmm. I have nowhere to go, but forward, I've chosen my path. Okay. Trying to make the path viewable here a little bit. There we go. The path takes a bit of a turn in front of you. All right. And this would put Tikaros on the map as well, if she's staying that close behind you. I pass through the seven levels of the candy cane forest, through <laughs> the sea of swirly, twirly gumdrops. Are you making fun of my my maps that I didn't draw at all, but I I, I collected? <laughs> I like this no. One. And then you accidentally land on the space with a shoot, and you're back down to square <laughs> one. Back at the beginning. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you come around the bend, Not and molasses. The, path, <laughs> the bath, the bath. Oh, God. You got me tongue-tied now. The path twists off to the left and the right, and ahead of you, you see an ornate column carved out of stone. I'd like to examine this column. All right. Is there, is there any kind of marking on it? It or? is a somewhat generically styled, but it's it's you know got little. Uh, can't think of the word all of a sudden. I hate it when that happens. Little canals through it. It's like a column, you know, like a Greek column. Uh, there are some yeah. wings carved around it. Uh, multiple wings going around the top. Kind of like sets mm -hmm. of wings. And it is inset in an area in a stone wall. Interesting. And a little ways away from it, let's see if I can get this to uh, do right for me. Hey, what do you know? Kind of did. You see another column. Uh, okay. A bit to the south of it. I would like to climb up. Okay. Right over here. All right. You get on the top of that, which is going to give you a little bit better view of this area around here. I am trying to get it to draw nicely for me, but you know. That's fine. 
Appreciate my love hate relationship with roll 20. And I'm going to try and cross these, go. cross these roots between the columns and hope that I found the right place. All right. Uh, you get across there and there is a platform, the edge of which is crumbling where the tree limb roots have grown into it. Um, and there appears to be a double stone door, but it won't budge. It won't budge. That stinks. Uh, okay. Is there any sort of... Is there any marking or any sign of where this is? There is a symbol of Afara carved into the stone, but it's hard to make out because of the tree roots that have grown over it. Afara, yucky. And yes, all of you would be on the map at various distances as you moved into closeness at this point. So. Ew, the polis. Gross. <laughs> Suddenly, Afara appears and smacks you across the face. <laughs> Civilization, he's a, a ranger. Afara, he Afara wherever you are. Afara. I like um, Maria. She doesn't like cities. Cities are for weirdos. Cities are for squares. How many squares. trees did you clear out to build your city? Tree killer. <laughs> gotcha. There. Give you a little bit more view of what you're standing in. So. All right. Uh, yeah, if I can't get in, then that's that. I mean... I guess I'm just going to pack my shit and go home. <laughs> All um, right. Uh, no, I'm not going to go home, but let's see. I'm going to continue moving around. And now that I'm up on the upper level again, I'm just, I'm not going to bother carving anything. I'm just going to call down to Tikaros, who I see below me. I've climbed again. There was a door over that direction, but it doesn't budge. Could be a temple of Ifara, by appearances. Maybe we should give it an offering or something? If you want to give an offering to Ifara, that's your business. Mm. I'll just go have a look and wait for the others to catch up. He's going to cross these roots in the meantime. All right. Come on, Rule 20, cooperate. There we go. So you can see that the wall continues on. And you've got a path that continues off in this direction. So, okay. Sorry to make you constantly have to reveal stuff, Tam. No, that's okay. I, that's what we're here for. We are uh, investigating and searching where you're going. So. So I want to make sure where everybody else is going, because I see Tikaros is doing a little bit more uh, searching and investig investigating. That's what Tikaros does. She's an investigator. You got it. I guess if I... Tikaros, did he... Is he? Are you still following him, or did he go a different way? Oh, he went that way, but there's a door here. Could this be useful? I'm going to sit down and wait. Maybe. I can see if we can open it. Let's have a look at these statues. All right. I'll have a look at the statue. Me too. Looking at the statue, it matches the one on the other side, again, with the, the wings above it. Uh, this one's a little less damaged by age, and in one of the sets of wings in the center of it, you can see an eye. Ooh. <gasps> 
Aren't we looking for an eye address? Hyrax, I think we found the eye. Yeah, over here. <sighs> he turns around and goes back. It's all right, Hyrax. <laughs> I'm like, such an investigator. Just kicking a pebble. Just <laughs> <laughs> What would you like to do? Mm. I Hyrax. poke the eye. Yeah. You poke the eye? Is that what you said? It's at the top of the column, so you may need some help oh. getting up there. Unless you want to try climbing up to it, that's fine. Oh, I would love to try that. All right. Well, uh, since you do not have a climbing um, speed, let's have an acrobatics check. Okay. Acrobatics. Oh, not bad. Ooh, that's a 13. I was going to say, can I give her a boost to uh, give her advantage, but it's too late. advantage. Oh, there you go. <laughs> of course, you're going to have to get close. With my one hand. To, you got to get close to her the outside of social distancing to do that. So just That's being okay. clear. All right. I feel fine. <laughs> and by the way, Adrastos, you can't do that. You could do that. Yeah, I know. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> I realized. Give her, oh. give her the shoulders. Give her the shoulders. She can climb on your shoulders. You can send them. That. Was a natural twenty with right. the advantage. You are able for to make it up. To, you are able to make it up to the top, and when you do, this one that has the eye in the center, you can tell the others should, but they're just weathered and aged. This one, when you get a look at it, the design of it is just intricately beautiful. You can tell. I mean, this thing's only about this big, but you can tell every individual feather was hand carved into this. And the eye sits in the middle, just beautifully squarely, and appears to have like lights radiating out from it. Um, just very well made. Uh, although poking the eye does not do anything. Any ideas for getting this eye to help us? You believe that this is the eye? Ah, all right. He approaches the door again. I'm going to go ahead and reveal this stuff down here because I think you would have been able to see a little bit more from up there. I, I seek entry. I seek the wisdom of the gods. My name is Hyrax of Satessa. There's no response. <sighs> Well, at least the gods are consistent. Mm. Let's see. So which column has the eye still in it, since the other one did not? That would be the one closest to Tikaros over here to the right. Oh, that's right. He should be practicing social distancing from Tikaros there. Well, nobody else is now. I mean, you know, there's always been there's there's been touchy going on. So I'm still way the heck over there. So <laughs> you I don't have know what the you're talking about. version of Purell as everybody <laughs> tries yeah. to do their hands. Does anyone know of the practices of the cult of Afara? Can I have a think? Afara? Roll me a religion check if you're trying to uh, go over mythos of Afara. Yeah, why not? Oh, 18. You recall that temples to Afara are always built as though they were a vessel filled with water that could be poured out. So while you may have doors here, there's the spout would be somewhere else. <gasps> yeah, I tell everybody this random wandering thought. So we should go around then. Yeah, want to do a scout? That is what I've been doing. I'll wait here. He's going to go back <clears throat> the way that he was going. Uh, and see if he can find a way around to another side of this temple. 
Assuming the, he's not the way he was him. going could be taken a couple of ways. The way so he was sure going that. is <laughs> okay. You walk, you go across that, and you see that the wall continues to the north a bit, and then starts to curve. It's like so somebody part. took this large stone building and just set it down. You will follow the wall. Follow the wall north. All right. What is the rest of the party going to do? I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to sit and wait. Okay. As you uh, make your way around yeah. it, as you make your way around this, almost like it's a clock face, uh, the grass begin and the trees begin to brown and, and change to that lightish yellow again. And then they go from yellow to a darker brown. Still alive, but just very dull, dark earth colors. Hyrax <laughs> was uh, traipsing around the, uh, the circuit of this uh, large structure. He's been gone for about half an hour, so I want to check in with uh, Tali, Drastos, and Tikaros and see what's happening back where they're. Absolutely nothing, it sounds like. I mean, I guess we're just waiting. Yeah. Standing around waiting. Tikaros sitting on her hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did that. Okay. <sighs> Maybe, uh, I don't know, looking around occasionally, but yeah. But you're not going to leave the area you're in. You're going to stay put, basically. Okay, cool. Hmm. Polly is incredibly in his own mind right now because of this, the, the secret. A secret. Secrets. Secrets are That weird. was a good book, wasn't it? Hmm? Just gets you in your, th in your thoughts and feelings. Yep, oh, yep, yep. Hyrax, as you make your way around... And things begin to look a bit dead. The outside of the building begins to, instead of being this fine, nicely made stonework, it just seamlessly blends into large stones. It's still a wall. You can still make it out. But it's more stones than uh, the brickwork anymore. And I'm going to say you're going to be right about here on the map. Yeah, very good. All right. Uh... Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to keep going. All right, let me see if I can get this to let I'm me reveal. I'm going to forge ahead and hope that this is the answer that he needs. All right. Again, you can see the stone wall. It's kind of hard to make out the stone wall on this part of the map as well, but you can see that it continues around, and you're still up elevated above the tunnels. All right. Let's see. He continues on somewhat warily. Give me a perception check. Okay. Since I am being wary. Yep. That is not great. That's 17. All right. You make your way across this. Hold on a second. I'm having mouse problems. You make your way across, and as you step foot on the solid ground on the other side of these roots, you hear movement and a hissing noise. Kind of like a creature going, Shh. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, I'm going to be stealthy if I can. How dark is it, by the way? It's still dark. It's still okay. pretty dark. I'm going to continue stealthing through and try and see where that noise came from. All right, so you're going to proceed forward? I will proceed forward. All right. No, no turning back now. In for, a, in for a lepton, in for a drachma, as they say. <laughs> you move a little bit say? forward, Something like and that. you find yourself face to face with a scaly creature with green eyes that seem to almost peer through you and i'm going to need a constitution saving throw oh no 
You about to turn into a rock. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, nope. you're not. I you're prob- going to make this save. I, prob- I probably am about to turn into a rock, except I'm not because I just rolled a natural 20. <laughs> that is excellent. Uh, the eyes catch you for a moment, but your reflexes cause you to immediately you know, <laughs> avert your eyes from it as you see the Baskalis standing on the uh, hill ahead of you. Shit. And it's definitely noticed you. Oh, no. It has? Oh, no. Okay. I didn't get to roll stealth or anything. Uh... Do I really want to engage this thing right now? I mean, it is one-on-one, but I don't want to get turned into stone. So tell me about how your posture is so that you're not uh, looking at this creature. I'm giving credit that you know not to look in its eyes. (laughs) That would be a well-known legend. Uh, Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, okay, uh, let's see, how am I not looking at it? I don't have a mirror or anything, plus there's no light, so it wouldn't help anyway. Um, I mean, I would be holding just my shield up in front of my okay. face to keep from seeing it. All right, that works. Um, relying on my other senses for the moment, I guess, but which is rough. Never thought I would need blindsight on this character. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay. Do I need to roll initiative? Is it aggressive? Well, I- I'm waiting to see what you're going to do. It hissed at you, but it's just standing there at the moment. Um, what do I know about basilisks? Uh, they are monstrosities. <laughs> they are monstrosities. Can I roll to know about basilisks? Can I uh, milk sh- my favorite enemy feature for as much as it's worth? Absolutely, I think you should. As long as I have it. You're a freaking ranger, you get at least that much, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, that is 13 plus. What skill is this going to be? Or is this? Uh, let's do uh, nature. Since Well, I mean. Then 16. Your... Good enough. Uh, you know that obviously they can uh, petrify you, turn you to stone with their eyes. Um, they are pretty fierce fighters. They bite. Uh, they move not super quick, but quick enough. Uh, and if they get hold of you and bite you, it's going to do a lot of damage, and they carry poison in their bite. I want it to. St- I want this thing to stay away from me at all costs. Um, you also know that they eat stones, and there are certain stones that they prefer to others. I'm going to. I want to get pa- past this thing as soon as possible, so I'm going to try a trick. That I've not gotten to work yet, but I'm 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 hoping that it'll work this time. I don't know how strong they are. Probably too strong to to make this work. But um, I'm gonna pull out my net, uh, whisper a quick prayer to Nylea, cast ensnaring strike on my net, and then throw it at the basilisk. And okay. vines are going to spring out of the net as it hits it if it hits it. All right, well, let's see. All right. That is... Okay, that is a 22 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, So... All right, so it is... It can use its action to make a DC 10 to to free itself. Okay. Um, But that would take its action. So it's it's already restrained. Uh, And then for ensnaring strike, uh, 
it has to make a strength saving throw to keep from also being restrained by ensnaring strike. All right, give me just a second because I was trying to mark it, but it is not behaving, so I'll come back to that. Uh, what's my DC on this? 14. <laughs> and you said it's strength? Yes. Uh, that is a fail. Uh, so the net catches it, and then out of the like hemp of the net, um, these brambles spring out and wrap around it, even inside of that, just winding around it. Um, and I cast that with a... I only cast that with second level. I'm not... Tr I don't care too much for the damage. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll the piercing damage. Okay. Oh, at the start of each of its turns, it takes piercing damage. Okay. Well, that would be uh, now. Basically, it will take two. Uh, it will take two actions, two separate actions, to free itself. To free from, itself from each of the restraints. As the net hits, it rips its head back, and then the vines come out and kind of pull it back down towards the ground. It growls for a moment and then lets out almost a whimper of a sound, and it's going to struggle against it. I already rolled. Uh, and it is still held tight. Okay. With it being held tight like this, I'm just going to try and move past it. Okay. I don't want any of this. I don't want to deal with it. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to continue moving along. So are you going to take the, I, I the outer go. roll? Okay, so I you're moving away good. from the structure. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Which way is the structure? Sorry. It is right here. So you, uh, ah, is it, there we go, pinging. So it's right over here. So you're kind of walking around the outside of it. It's like a round, very large, roundish building. Okay. Um, okay, I see. So in that case, I am actually going to go down this way. Okay. Uh, sort of parallel to the structure, but obviously along the other side. Uh, and I would like to. Is there any kind of entrance across this bridge, or is there is there anything across that bridge? Uh, there is. I'm trying to. The display on the other side is not as clear as the display on my side. So give me a moment as I'm still fighting with your friend and mine. You take your time. I don't have much choice. Understandable. There we go. Uh, there does appear to be an entrance. I'm going to run for that entrance while the basilisk is still entangled. Because mm -hmm. I've got at least 12 seconds, I reckon. Right. And you make it across the way, and you can see that it continues inward. Oh, yeah, and at the start of each of its turns, it would take uh, a d6 of piercing damage. All right. So go ahead and roll that and let me know how, right. how the or, poor thing uh, is faring. Or magical piercing damage, and then if it, I guess it would start another turn like that. So okay. That would, be, that would be another six on top of that. It can, every, every few seconds, it kind of wails out in pain. You can hear that it struggles against it. Uh, what was my DC on the first one to break the first so layer? The, so the DC to break the, the net is the DC to break the net is 10. Okay, so it made that one on that. So it's gotten a little bit the, freer. But the uh, but the entangling strike that binds uh, is 14. Okay, well, we'll have to do that on the next uh, turn anyway. So. Yeah, and I'm going to hurry inside. All right. Ah. Roll 20 hates me. Ta -da. You see that it opens up into what appears to be a fairly large room.
He's just going for it. All right. Well, first off, roll me a d6. I am indeed going for it. That is three more. All right. And you hear it cry out in pain a bit more. And then you hear the sound as though its bindings have cracked and it is no longer held. Does it sound like it's pursuing me? Uh, I'm going to say you can't really tell yet. You just heard it break loose, so I'm going to kind of go an alternating initiative here. You it, you it, so it's back on you at this point. Uh huh. Okay. Well, um, so I'm in this chamber. What is this in the center? That is an emblem carved into the middle of the floor. It's There's a broken area around it that's like it was broken to begin with. And in the center of the floor is a stylized drawing of a giant eye. Okay. Well, here I am. Um... He's probably fine, right? Yeah, I was going to say I'm going to come back to the other guys because he's been <laughs> gone for a good 45 minutes to an hour at this uh, point. Uh -huh. So what are you guys doing now? Still waiting? I mean, he's very sneaky and he's good at scouting, but he's a ranger. This obviously is his expertise. But it's so long. Like, this structure is not that big. 45 minutes? And I'm always leery of leaving our companions by themselves for too long. But on the other hand, if I come barreling in and he's stealthing up to something to take it out, I could ruin it for him. So it's a fine line. The problem I have is the fact that if... If it does take 45 minutes to round the structure and we start heading behind him and he comes back round and we're not there in front of the gates. You're right. We've just missed another opportunity. But what if he's hurt? Maybe that's the reason he hasn't returned. Well... If that's the case, and I don't rec I don't necessarily recommend this, but if that's the case, we should have at least one person still stay at the gate, and others follow the tracks. I move fairly quickly, and I can see in the dark, so perhaps I should go find him, and the two of you should stay here. That could work. All right, I'll oh, stick man. to the wall, and if I don't find him and I find danger, I promise I will return. I will not go headlong into a fight. I still don't like it. I don't okay. like it either, but I also don't like Hyrex a... being on his own. Yes. We're just trying to make the best out of this unfortunate situation that we're in. So I'll put one hand on the wall and I'll start tracing the wall. Okay. There are places where you'll have to move away from it to cross the root bridges and stuff. Okay. But um, And by one hand, I mean the tip of the javelin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put one javelin tip against it. All right. So you're making your way around. That's going to take a little while, obviously, if Hyrex has been gone this long. Okay. I, I am moving with some speed. Like, I'm not really trying to be stealthy. Right. Okay. Uh, Tigros, Ptolemaeus, are you going to do anything yeah. while you wait? 
Is the impatience yes. going to be too much? <laughs> I'm bored. And as soon as Adrastos leaves, Tikaros will sit back down and there's like a bunch of stones around her. And she's been just idly using her little prestidigitation on the stones to make little marks. And they look like just strands, like strands of hair. And she's just going to sit back down and just try and meditatively keep doing this repetitive little motion to keep her curiosity at bay. Like <laughs> right. strands of hair on the little stones around her. Something mm -hmm. she saw in a dream once. All right. I like it. Very nice. Elimaeus? Nothing so far. I'll, I'll just watch her, though. All right. I'll spend the time watching what she's doing. Okay. So you are a bit behind him, Adrastos, but we'll put you on the map up here at the moment. Uh, Hyrax, you are in the building. Uh, you see the eyeball on the floor diagram uh what would you like to do i'm going to if there's no way to interact with this diagram or well, i don't know if there is or not if i touch it does anything happen you reach down to touch it and it feels warm not hot just warm mm. Okay, but if I push on it, it offers no, uh, it no. doesn't give at all. No. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to continue moving through the chamber out the other side, if possible. All right. You make it across the way, and as you approach the staircase and you turn on it, You encounter someone who is obviously on the wrong map layer. Oh. You find uh, yes, yourself... our greatest foe, the map layers. The what map are you layers, doing here on the, the wrong map, map layer, he says. <laughs> uh, it has teleported to the correct map layer now. Yes, yes. As you turn the corner, you find yourself face to face with what appears to be a very old woman. Her eye sockets are empty. She's holding a large staff in one hand. She just turns and leans her head at you. He was kind of hurrying, and when this happens, he stops abruptly. Ah. Are you the eye that they speak of? <laughs> and she kind of leans in and opens the empty sockets at you and goes, Hey, hi. No, no, there's no reason to kill him. Very true. There's no reason to kill me. I came here seeking wisdom, advice, perhaps healing. He seems to want a lot, doesn't he? Whatever I can get, really. Ooh, not that kind of a woman, am I? <laughs> Nor that kind of a man, but... She'll take the tip of the staff and kind of push back out of my way, back, back. He backs away. <laughs> he backs away. No, I'm not going to hit him. Did you see my pet outside? Yes. I'm afraid I may have irritated it. Irritated it? What did you do? I'm afraid I trapped it for a moment. I didn't want it to turn me to stone. Turn you to stone? Turn you to stone? I never knew that they could do that. Without eyes, I doubt you would. <laughs> oh, 
Whatever. Okay, fine. Did you know? No, it does not matter. So you came seeking advice. What fate of death do you face? A plague. Mm -hmm. Plagues, those can be so fun. It's, what? No, I don't know if it's a melting... It doesn't matter what he eats. Would you like a cup of tea? I, he's a little taken aback. Do we have time for a cup of tea? I have all the time in the world. You have do a plague. I... You do, you have time. I suppose I could sit and have a cup of tea. If you think we could talk while I do so. I'll talk all you wish. And she I... makes her way over to some, uh, Holds in the wall over here to, uh, and takes out a couple of uh, very nice dishes. So saucers, cups, very nicely made. If I may ask, who are you talking to? You wonder who I'm. I'm talking to you, silly. When you're not talking to me, you you turn as though you're speaking to someone else. No, I don't. Hmm. I see. She brings over a cup of tea to you and hands it to you. You never saw her fill the cup, but both cups are full. Hmm. Okay. Well, might as well trust it. Not like I got many other options. Um, he takes a sip. Of course I didn't poison the tea. How does it taste? <clears throat> um, very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, if I could ask. Most people day. don't like tea that's made with poison gooseberries, but I think it just adds an extra spicy zing to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Poison gooseberries. Yes, that's just what they call them. It keeps the riffraff from stealing the witch's stuff. People I think see. Hemlock's poison, too, you know. Yes, I know Hemlock is poison. Uh, is there another entrance to this place? I think my friends... Why? Are, are you planning to come back when I sleep and kill me? Or maybe you're a thief and you plan to come back and steal. What would you steal from an old woman? You wouldn't take my fi- And she grabs back the cup and saucer from me. You wouldn't steal my teacups. I have no intention of stealing anything from you. Or anyone else for that matter. I asked because I was at a pair of double doors. And I think my friends are still waiting outside of them. I wanted double to doors. know if it would be possible. Double doors. That sounds like someone I used to know who worked for a wizard. Double doors. I just took 2d10 of psychic damage. You're welcome. <laughs> I rolled max on those 2d10s. <laughs> yes, I'm TPK dead. by DM pun. <laughs> No, I'm not aware of any doors. I, I rarely leave here. I, I find there's not much to see. I see. I'm ah. sure you do. Hmm. Well, what I'm more curious about is what you see without eyes. Well, not much. But... But I never the, said I had no eye. Do you know a way that I can be cured? And I'm going to stop you there. Adrastos, uh, by this point, you would be approaching the area. 
and let's say that you you can see the path. You can kind of tell where Hyrax went. Hyrax, I don't know if you were marking your trail. You didn't say you were. So I'm going to say you're just nope, kind I of... I stopped doing it. There's not much el- There's not much other way he could have gone from what you're okay. seeing, is, except to follow this path around. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I'll just uh, follow the path. I suppose. All right. So you cross the area across there, and then you hear rustling movement ahead of you. And this large creature comes barreling out of the tree line, sounding quite angry. Okay, well, I would revert to my instinct and, like, drop down into, like, a phalanx formation with my javelin hand on top of my shield. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and reveal a little bit more there. So the creature is going to come charging forward, and this is going to be about as far as it makes on that charge. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Uh, Would I know what this creature is? Because I imagine that my clan would have fought them before. I have said that it's a well-known mythological yeah. creature so okay or, well, well and it's charging me. at me it's charged in your direction yes cool um i'm going to assuming that it is angry and going to try and attack me drop my head behind the shield so i'm not looking at it but keep the spear on top so that it's going to run into like trying to like bore spirit okay so you're just kind of you're going to hold position basically mm-hmm. and wait for yeah. it to continue forward all right it is going to charge forward and hit the edge of these limbs. And uh, it's a fairly good sized and heavy creature. It comes forward, steps onto the first set of limbs, which crack under its weight, and it begins to fall, but it backpedals. So it is standing on the edge. Some of the tree limbs are broken now, are roots, and it is standing there hissing and growling at you, kind of pacing itself back and forth on the edge. Okay. Um, now, extremely concerned. Um, because I know what this is, and I haven't heard from Hyrex, I'm going to yell out at the top of my voice, Hyrex! With your perception, Hyrex, you definitely <laughs> hear a noise that sounds somewhat like Adrasto, Adrasto's yeah. yelling your name. And at which point would uh, address to see the torn tatters of a hempen net? He wouldn't. He's not. He's his eyes are down. He's looking at the ground. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, now I, I wish know. I had drawn a griffin on those stone doors. Since you said <clears> that, <throat> it's a griffin door. That would have been so great. <laughs> well, that and then when they opened, we could just slither in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna huff and puff and leave right now. I will. <laughs> um, so since I stopped scratching the raven claws on the uh, trees, um, could I? Uh... No, don't cut that. Okay. No, I got I... it. I was there. All right. Could I? Um... I guess I would surmise that he's struggling with the basilisk, and I would ask the old woman, I think my friend might be out there. Is there anything you could do about your pet to make sure he's not harmed? My pet? Harmed? Why would my pet harm anyone? Your pet is a basilisk. (laughs) It's very dangerous to most people. My pet's a basilisk? All this time? But it has a horn in the middle of its head and a mane. Oh. He he jerks upright. Oh, well, first of all, there is a very dangerous basilisk outside. Well, dangerous how? You mean if you look into its eyes and she blinks? Yes, dangerous to everyone else. But more importantly, it's poisonous. Oh, well, As that sounds your- absolutely dreadful. No, I don't think we should put it in the tea. Yes, addressed us. So I haven't heard anything, so I'm going to assume that Hyrax is dead. 
Uh, no, I'm, I, I will, I will yell out. I will yell out. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you, oh, oh, I have very sensitive ears. Uh, right. Well, I, I have moved to the top of the stairwell and I'm calling down. Adrastos! I don't care how long it's been. We can't make him stay if he doesn't want to. Yeah, I'm... I'm glad this creature didn't kill you and that you're safe. We just, you were taking a long time and we got worried. Um, no, I will not nail help? his feet to the floor. Are you able to get past it? It, it took down one of the bridges. So perhaps, but I will try. And Adrasos is going to back up, kind of like look down under his shield to judge the distance between the two places. And he's going to jump. Meanwhile, Hyrax has no idea that this is happening. And he's just like, don't endanger yourself. Turn back if you need to. This is Adrasos you're speaking to. <laughs> Well, I, I, I actually will start to do that, and then I'll stop, because I made a promise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the building, <laughs> what are Tikaris and Ptolemaeus doing? Same thing. I'm making pretty hair patterns in the rocks. <laughs> Definitely just keep looking on and seeing what she's doing to, to keep herself busy. Just more so that I wanted to, to keep an eye out because I feel like Tikros might just slink off if... Yeah. Like, if how long she... has it been? Like, how much longer has it It's been a been good gone? hour and a half, I'm going to say. Holy... Seriously. I know, but number one, like I said, you have the expertise of Hyrax, but also Adrastus made a promise. So nothing is dangerous so far, at least, from what should be the case. And even then, in the woods, any type of danger like that they're probably more suited to do anything than we are. I think we're pretty cool. Let's cool. go. Yes. Let's just go. Let's follow. I'd still rather not. Okay, what about if I make you a promise? I'll just go for a little walk-see. I'll see if they're okay. If there's danger, I'll come back. Oh, you'd say that, but <clears throat> that would leave me alone. And what if the danger was here? That's right. You should come with me. But I'd have to stay here, though. Or else I don't think they're coming back. Around. I don't think they're coming back. I trust. I trust that they understand that we're still there. I think it's worse if we weren't here. If they come back. What if the doors open? What if they get the doors open? Okay. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Let's Ooh. make it ten, and we'll decide from there. I would like for both of you to give me a perception check, please. Okay. Seventeen. Awesome. Hmm. Oh, uh, that's a 14. Colomaeus is just, you know, listening to you back and forth, watching you make the hairs. But Tikaros, you hear, you begin to hear music. Well, singing, humming. You're not sure what it is, but you swear that you can make out intermittent music. 
coming from somewhere down to kind of the southeast a bit, so around the southern way around the building. A Very light, a little way. bit echoey. I can put the map back up to uh, show. I was just trying to not do a lot of map popping, but... Oh, okay. that's all right if it's Trixie. No, 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 no. I'm just lazy. So, see where I'm pinging? Yeah, down so there. Somewhere down, kind of in that area. Holly, shh. Can you hear that? They're singing. And I'll point in the direction. And he doesn't hear it. I'm going to say with that perception, he still doesn't hear it, even with you pointing it out to him. No. Are you sure it's not just the, the birds or anything? Well, I don't think it sounds like birds. You do realize that most stories of adventurers, you know, when there is singing in unknown woods or in the water, it's things trying to entrap you and ensnare you. You want to go and check it out. <sighs> I can be really stealthy. What if I just go a little ways? What if you can see me the whole time? I'll follow behind you. As soon as I see something wrong, I'm going to drag you out. Okay. Just a little ways? Yeah, let's go. Sure. Where are you going to head to? How are you going to? He's gonna this? creep over here. Okay, that is, that's going to be the wall that awesome. you're in. So there is some rock oh. outcropping that goes along the edge of it. So we have to go on the edge, yeah. like out here. Would we be kind of? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So just creep a little ways and then stop and listen again. All right. And that's going to open your viewpoint a little bit more down here. See if I can get that to work. Yes. Uh, you're going to tell that there's an entrance down there, and the sound <gasps> appears to be coming from that. It's kind of an echoey sound coming out of it. Dolly, they should have gone this way. Look, it looks like an entrance. I don't like the feeling of this, but I guess. You want to check it out? Well, you know I do, but I'm also going to listen to you. Same deal. Anything bad happens, we get out as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. I creep forward further then. So creeping along, this is going to take you a few minutes. After, right at seven minutes, after you started, you heard the singing at the first point, it stops. Okay. The singing is gone. Mm-hmm. I'm going to peek my head in this entrance, if I can. All right. Just peer around. Uh, it appears to be some kind of a tunnel that continues on in. I can make us invisible. To be honest, I'm a little bit more relieved that the singing stopped, which meant that the singing wasn't actually for us, meant for us. Holly, do you want to Hold be on. invisible? Hold on. Wait for me a little bit. I'm okay. going to go around this rock. And, uh... Hmm. Oh, what am I doing? I have... I have ink. I have ink pen. I have paper. I'm gonna write a note. I'm just gonna write a note and put a rock right next to the door and tell them <laughs> we went south. That's dumb. I just looked at the, my item list. Yeah, easy. I'll just write write a note, find a rock, uh, basically put it right next to the uh, the door on... I'll, I'll kind of lean it towards this 
near this uh, statue okay. or this pillar. Mm-hmm. And just basically write that, that Tikaros and I went down um, the other way uh, and followed the walls until we found a tunnel. We should be inside. All right. And um, I'll follow behind Tikaros. I'll just be like, all right. Well, in this case, they'll come back, and at least we have something to tell them. Let's go. Okay. This might feel a little weird, and I'll reach out and touch Tolly and cast Invisibility at third level so we both vanish from view. All right. It is night, and it's dark out here, but inside the tunnel, you can tell once you get in about 10 feet, it's dark and gets darker. There's no light that's making its way in, as this is a tunnel that goes in and bends. I, I really can't see anything in here. Well, you hear in your head, all we'll see is this tiny dancing light that I will cast out ahead of us that kind of travels. Let me look at the details of how far away this will be. So if we have one little light leading us, it'll shed dim light in a 10-foot radius, and I can have it 120 feet is the range. Can you choose the different colors on on the light? You can change... Yep. Glowing orbs, torches, or lanterns. So a little glowing orb, a single one. Uh, does it does it say does it specify like color or anything? I don't have it. It doesn't. Up, so. No, it doesn't in the spell specify color, but that could be flavor if Tam allows. I'm so fine so go for it. Is it possible for for Tolly to, um, in in a lot of the tons tons of scrolls that he's read kind of describe to Tikaros what a firefly looks like and try to mash the dancing light into something with the same color as a firefly. I I love the idea of it. Great. Okay. So it's just like... Now, there's only one problem here. You've got two concentration spells. Of course I do. Great. Jacob. So, I tell this to Tolly. We can have one or the other. We don't need to be invisible, as long as the light is a little further in front of us. (laughs) I love being invisible. (laughs) Right, but it's definitely easier that way. Okay. And I cast the little firefly, as Tully described, out in the distance ahead of us. How far ahead? It will be. If it's going to be this small and you're trying to limit the amount of light it's going to cast, uh, I'm going to say it's going to be a dim light. So maybe 10 feet is going to be the most you get out of it. Sure thing. That's what it is then. All right. I will try to do the opposite of what Roll20 just did and reveal instead of hide. All right, there we go. So the tunnel goes in a little bit further. Your firefly ahead of you. Yeah. And we'll creep forward, I guess. All right. Giving Tam the fun of revealing. The tunnel turns sharply to the left. Do we hear anything at this point? Give me a perception check. Tolly, I'm stopping to listen. You hear in your head. Okay. Ooh, with an eight. <laughs> That's a little better. Hold on. I, ha- I have a better one. Is it 22? All right. You hear the distinct sound of water sloshing. There's, I can't hear anything. There's water in, in the distance. Okay, let's go. You enter the room, and with your 
firefly ahead of you. It will illuminate a bit. You can see that there's a column. There are some steps leading down and water at the base. Do I notice in this area if there are any torches or anything around that, that I could... You see that there are, are statues around it, and you see the column in front of you, but there doesn't appear to be any light sources. All right, Tikaros, I'm going to do something, and, well, if it alerts anything, we know the way out. Okay. Uh, I am going to... See if I have something here for, for it. But uh I have a lamp. And I will I will presto to light the lamp and hold okay. it out to this area. Knowing that there is water in the in the area or I could hear the water sloshing. Right, so that's gonna give you about thirty feet of light. So and I'm going to step up. out here next to the pillar. I'll just kind of like touch the pillar and, and raise my lamp out a little bit more. All right. You do that and you hear a voice that says, Who sent you to my home? We were not sent. We are only here seeking guidance. And help. A figure moves forward out of the darkness with a serpentine body and snakes that are dancing around on her head. And she looks you dead in the eye, and I need both of you to make constitution saving throws. Oh no! Makes sense. Oh. Oh, and if you don't nice. call this episode getting stoned. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gotten stoned yet. So. 24. That's oh, a dirty fine. 20. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Rolls really looks good. At both of you. And you feel this, her eyes flash across you. And then her face kind of goes from this angry snarl to a more mild look of... Uh, Disappointment. Who are you? I, I suppose you're not. Sorry. Go ahead. I suppose you're not. You aren't the, the eye that we were looking for. Is that some kind of a joke? She has all these snake heads with eyes dancing around. Is that what they call me now? The eye. Simply sinful. That's what we were told. From the town of Krimnos. Yeah, Krimnos. They were once a wonderful village that worshipped Farika, but now, now they're just sinners and, and followers of others. No, now they are rubble and rotting. Mm, serves them right. But there is some sort of plague in the area that one of my companions might have Potentially got caught in two of them, actually. I'll kind of look over at Tikros. And it was by some otherworldly means that, well, we've been chasing for quite a while. As you say this, she quickly moves in front of this altar in the center of the room. No, you can't have it! What is your other relation? 
to the Lady Farika. I serve her as do all of my kind. We have actually just finished a, f a quest for her. Retrieve something for her that was stolen and hidden by Phoenix. I'm still technically on this quest to return the item to her. So, in a sense, although I am not a di direct follower of Fariko, we are, in essence, following the same god. She thinks about this for a moment. Number one, she does not give quests. She tests the metal of the weaker one. Two, you don't willy nilly follow one the gods over another. You either follow the god or you don't. It was a figure of speech. Mm. Well, I don't know why you're here. I don't know what any of this has to do with me. We're merely looking for some sort of well, potential guidance for this plague. And also the nearest way to contact Farika to give this. And I'll pull out the, the, uh, oh, what's his face? The wooden vessel. Mm. And give this back. Well, you won't find her here. I'm here to guard and keep. Oh. You must leave now. That is my guidance to you. Leave now, or I will be forced to take your lives. Before we go, quick question then. If you could. This structure. What is on the other side of it? My companions have rounded the structure for 45 minutes, an hour, or more. It's obviously larger than this chamber alone. She reaches down on either side and draws a short sword in each hand and takes an aggressive posture. I take it that's your answer. Let's go, Tikros. And I'll try to get Tikros to fall, come follow me back into the, the little hole. As I do, I want to detect thoughts on her. All right. But I'll like be slowly backing away. Okay. At the same so time. So, is this your just surface, or is this the surface? Deep? Okay, surface. Surface only. Hold on, I gotta see how much it's gonna bleed here. <laughs> they can't take the staff. The staff must be protected. Okay. In Tolly's head, he hears she's thinking about a staff that we're not allowed to take. Just in case that's of interest. Um, you'll see the back of my head, and, and you can see me moving as I'm nodding, but I'm I'm still continuing to walk forward. I'm I'm not like keeping an eye on her as I back off. As I as soon as I get into the tunnel, I'll just act as if I'm looking straight at the tunnel exit. I'll just keep okay. going. Okay, I'll follow. Okay, I'm going to put you guys on hold. Hop back over to the other two. And we're going to have to end shortly because I know one of the players has has to go in a moment. But let's come back over here to where <clears throat> Adrastos decided not to jump into certain death. Um, Hyrax uh, was making his way out to Adrastos, but now I see he's just moved somewhere else. So I'm confused as to what he's doing. 
Uh, I was calling out to address this not to come. Okay. Uh, but I, the old woman never answered my question. What question was that? Is there any way by which I may be cured? Well, define cured. Is it simply you wish not to die? Of this disease from which I have been afflicted, yes. Hmm. Well, we all must die one day. You could go stare the basilisk in the eye, be turned to stone, and you would not die from this plague. For a yeah. while, anyway. You could take another sip of the poison tea. Oh, the tea's not poisoned. Stop! It is not poisoned. I do have hemlock. No. I would prefer not to give some other affliction the chance to take me before this one. Instead, I would like to simply be rid of it. Ah. Show me this plague. Have I started to show any signs of it yet? Um, no, you have not. I have not suffered you yet. I've seen its effect on survivors of criminals. Hmm. She They're takes her staff and begins to go wave it up and down and starts muttering different words. Words you don't know. Back and forth as she waves this thing around you. I see no plague on you. He doesn't know that. I'm not plagued. I see no plague on you. There are no plagues on me. There are no plagues on me. By what? By what <laughs> magic would, would you see a plague on me? If I had one. Oh, very powerful magics. I cannot tell if you're being sarcastic. I have no sarcasm to offer you. Silence. He doesn't know that. What do I not know? I don't know. That what do you not know? That you speak of. I don't Something speak of anything. Obvious. I just told you you have no plague. You turned and said that I do not know something. No, I didn't. Oh, maybe you do have a fever or something. You see things that aren't happening. What are you not telling me? Tell me, how many fingers am I holding up? Enough. What are you keeping from me? Well, I've not offered you anything. You are it's... here to steal my teacup. You hide some secret from me, do you not? Even if I don't have a plague, I want to know how to cure the people of Primrose. I, I don't know I'm you. Fine. I probably have many secrets from you. What business is it of yours? No, I do not want to beat him to death. No, you Hyrax. can't either. Adrastos, you're still here. Yes, I, should I go back? Are you going to be all right? There's this beast out here. And a mad woman in here. Well. What would you have me do? How can I help you best? You could Protect stop yourself. him from taking my teacup! Who is... <clears throat> I doubt he's trying to steal your teacup, madam. It's no use. She 
She speaks in riddles. She tells me I have no plague, but I do not know if I can trust that. You think I would lie to you? I think perhaps. Ouch. And she takes and taps you on the forehead with her can't staff. Out! Ouch. Get out of my house! Out! 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 And then she starts taking the bottom of it like a broom and shooing at your feet. Out! 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 Uh, he starts backing away. Out of my house! Out! 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 One last question. <clears throat> Who are you? I'm the one who lives deep and dark in the woods, who eats the children and slaughters the husbands and wives in their sleep. I don't know. I'm trying to scare him away. Don't interrupt me. Can I roll insight on whether she actually does that? <laughs> Okay. I want to know if she's if she, does, is she just trying to scare me away or So I tell me exactly what you're trying to insight so I can be sure I'm answering the correct question here. The when she ju just now when she told me that she does uh, all those things eating children and killing husbands and wives in their sleep. Uh-huh. Was she being truthful? That was a dirty 20. <laughs> You get the distinct impression that she was, she, she's trying to make things up that are scary. She actually kind of winced a little bit when she said that about eating children. Okay, okay, that's very good. Why do you not want to tell me who you are? Why do you want to steal my teacup? I do not want to steal your teacup. Well, that's good. I'm sorry if I offended you. I'm not offended at all. He's a nice young lad, isn't he? Yes, yes, very friendly. Yes. I will not accuse you of deceit if you do not accuse me of theft. Theft? Have you stolen something? Did you see? No, I have not. <sighs> Adrastos, I will be coming out so shortly. Good. Go Scary. protect your friend and take care of him. And return when you have all of your people together. And then we can all sit down to tea. <gasps> oh, I may not have enough teacups. You wouldn't mind killing one of your friends so that I have enough teacups, would you? Tim, I never went up this staircase today. I know you did not. Be on that staircase. We're changing the subjects. Would, I don't have enough teacups. Would you mind killing one of your friends and bringing the rest? Or I'm you could kill yourself her. and they could come. I'm just going to step around her. She will take the staff and put it at chest level and block you from moving. Ooh. I don't have enough teacups. Then I will simply not invite all of my friends. Mm, that wouldn't be fair. Kill one of them. That makes it nice and easy. Fair square. Nobody suffers. Nobody's left out. How do you know how many friends I have? Why, my pet told me. Yes, the horse with the horn. Um... Yes, sure. That is the one you said, yes. Um, yes, it is, of course. Tam, can I roll insight again? Damn it. Woman <laughs> what, are you trying, what are you trying to insight? I want to know if that is her if that is her pet. She she sounds very <laughs> suspicious right now. Is, is her quote-unquote pet, the unicorn. Okay. Uh, that is... It's only a 17. <laughs> it's hard to tell. She seems earnest, 
but uh, maybe a little confused. The one whose voice speaks inside my head. Ooh, he hears voices in his head. I can't imagine living with that. What's it like to hear voices in your head? Yes, address us. Um, I would like to have shifted my body in such a way that I put the shield onto the javelin hand. Okay. And I'm going to take a throwing javelin and I'm going to throw it at the basilisk with disadvantage because I can't see it. But I'm, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I got to get over there and that thing's in the way. All right. I'll try I to think like aim is... it at, I'll aim at its feet like under my shield, but I'm trying to. I yeah. know we've gone a little bit over. I know one of the players has to leave. So when we come back last time, next time we'll have initiative with Adrastos throwing his javelin. Uh, we will have Hyrax uh, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this old woman who lives in a cave. And uh, then we'll find out what Tikaros and Tali are going to do with the Medusa, who apparently has a staff that they cannot have.